You got a lot of money to spend on true wireless earbuds? Let's pit the five most popular ones against each other. The Apple AirPods Pro 2. The Bose QuietComfort Buds 2. The Samsung Buds 2 Pro. The Sony WF-1000XM4. And the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3. Kurunda Khwer DHRME. Days of headphones reach my ears. Look, at the end of this video, we'll talk about which one is worth buying based on the prices, but prices keep changing, whereas performance does not. So let's get right into it with active noise cancelling performance. For active noise cancelling to our ears, the Bose is simply unbeatable. <laughs> it was almost eerie how much sound is cut out. You know, someone mentioned this in the comments and we agree, the great noise cancelling of 2021 is now just the good noise cancelling of 2022. I think this year has seen the biggest jump in terms of how strong active noise cancelling on earbuds has gotten. I mean, when Apple saw Bose's announcement, they must have been kicking themselves. They probably wanted to be industry leading and Bose has made them very Bose about losing the top spot. Just to give you an example, even typing hard on a keyboard or a TV running in the background completely disappears when you use the Bose QuietComfort Buds 2's noise cancelling. And if you have music on, you are in an island of silence. But Apple's ANC on the AirPods Pro 2 is no joke either. Considering that these might be the most popular earbuds in the world in a few months, Apple has set a new standard that many people will now consider normal. What is really incredible about Bose and Apple is that they are not just eliminating low-end sound, which we've been seeing for a while now, but also mid and higher frequency sounds, which likely requires considerable more processing power. We've long held Sony as one of the standard bearers, and its WF-1000XM4 has been the best at ANC for low-end sounds for a while now. But we really think that Samsung with its Buds 2 Pro has pipped Sony at the post, especially at the lower frequencies. The Sennheiser is really good too, much better than its predecessor, the Momentum 2. But again, in 2022, the Momentum 2 Wireless 3 has serious competition to live up to. And on this list, the Sennheiser comes in last. So these are the rankings for noise cancelling strength at about 70 to 80 dBA. The incredible thing about the AirPods Pro's 2's transparency mode is that they've had just one goal in mind. Well, two. Scratch that, three goals. The first one is to make the transparency sound as natural as possible. And that is crazy good. We never forget that we're wearing earbuds, but the AirPods Pro 2 is the one that makes you forget. Also great for heartbreaks. The first thing it does exceptionally well is the noise floor. Sitting in a very quiet place, we struggle to hear any white noise from the transparency algorithm. We try to visualize the white noise for you since we're visual people like that. White noise, just for clarity, is the hiss you hear when nothing is played and this comes into play when you're in a really quiet environment. Secondly, the clarity is very good. All frequencies are replicated perfectly. It's very much like natural hearing. And the third amazing thing is the adaptive transparency, which can be done almost in real time. It's an incredible technical achievement. We've heard YouTubers suggesting you could in theory go up to loudspeakers at a concert and wear these to listen to the concert. But please don't do that. It's not that good because A, there's a limit to how loud a sound it can protect you against, and B, you don't wanna to listen to a concert using the DSP of the AirPods Pro. You might as well listen to a recording of the concert using your AirPods. Bose, by the way, also has this protection, which they call Active Sense for lowering louder noises. And in our testing, it also worked well. So what about rankings? Let's take a look at the graphs at about 70 dBA, which is kind of what a public place would be at. So Apple is really the best here. Look, the graphs are here just to support our story. Um, what we hear with the ears is how we actually do these reviews. The graphs help you give, get, a, get a visual representation of that. So don't worry too much about the accuracy of the graphs. It's, it's the whole story that matters. And then the Apple AirPods Pro is clearly the best here. Very close to the sound level here in red. In fact, a bit higher, which makes which compensates for that plugged up feeling. And if you see the higher frequencies, um, this is also what we heard, there's a bit of sparkle for sure. The Buds 2 Pro, 
clearly follow Samsung's legacy of being excellent at transparency, well, at least boosting the transparency to almost non-natural levels. However, the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro has a more natural feel with the transparency. And as you can see, it hugs the noise level curve very closely. Um, doesn't have as much sparkle as the Apple on the higher end, but still does a great job. The Bose comes in a very close third. So now you see that it's all starting to fall below the noise level. Um, but it's still very, very close and we could see ourselves using the Bose for transparency. Then you have the Momentum 2 Wireless 3, which came out a few months ago and we thought they were pretty good, but this is how fast the industry is moving, guys. Comes up at fourth on this list. Now it has a different approach. It cuts out the lower end sound, as you can see, but it on the, on the mids and the treble, it does a fairly decent job. And again, I could see myself using this as transparency, except for the white noise bit, which we talked about earlier. And at the end or at the bottom of the list comes the Sony WF-1000XM4. Again, it employs an approach similar to that of the Sennheiser Momentum 2 Wireless 3, but somehow don't get misled by the graph. When we listen to this with our own ears, it just feels like the overall levels are a bit lower and using these for longer periods of times for transparency would not be our first pick. Uh, having said that, they are usable in a pinch. What is interesting is that if you use transparency or ambient mode at lower volumes, Apple still tops the list. But Sennheiser goes from third on the list to the last simply because of the loud noise floor you hear. So here's the ranking at low volumes. Here's the ranking at moderate volumes. And here's the ranking on the white noise. Now, which of these sounds better? It's gonna be hard to do a five-way comparison, but let's just talk about the special features and then the highlights of each of these. First off, Sony, Bose, and Sennheiser all have custom EQ settings for you to modify as you need, with Sony giving you maximum control over your sound with a five-band EQ and a clear bass slider. The Buds 2 Pro gives you EQ presets and the AirPods Pro 2 gives you nothing except the presets you get with iOS. Both Sony and Apple offer spatial audio or 360 features. Sony has been doing this forever and calls it 360 Reality Audio, another catchy Sony name combining letters and numbers. But we have to admit that Apple has taken it one step further and given the weight it has in the industry, Apple's spatial audio is probably going to be adopted far quicker than Sony's 360 audio ever was. There are also other smarts on board. We love Sennheiser's custom sound profile implementation and it worked well for us. And Bose claims to play audio tuned to your ear canal. Bose and Apple both have some form of adaptive EQ that makes listening at lower volumes very pleasant as well. Sony offers a DSEE for upscaling lower quality audio. All right, so much about the special features, but what about the sound itself? The Buds 2 Pro has a very nice open sound, hugging that Harman curve <laughs> closer than ever. What this means is that the sound profile will be enjoyed by most people. And when the audio god Crinical rates it as the best TWS, you know that means something. So things we like, the stock tuning and the sound with Samsung phones in particular, and the things we don't like, the fact that you only have EQ presets, not custom bands to tweak. Also on devices other than Samsung phones, you won't be able to utilize these to their maximum potential, but that's a smaller disadvantage, since these sound so good to begin with. To us, the treble out of the box can be a bit too much, especially when you start listening to podcasts and the like, the S's really start standing out, but it shines with certain kinds of music. The Bose's bass is second to none, and they really lean into that bass with their custom drivers. Bose is also a bit harder to measure because they have a lot of smart EQing they do with their adaptive EQ. Bose in general doesn't have a sparkly sound that lends itself to a warmer sound signature, and a lot of people enjoy that as well. It doesn't have the most advanced codecs out there like LDAC or APTX, but what they've done with AAC is quite impressive. And surprisingly, these sound better on iPhone than most of the other buds on the list, except the next one. I mean, at this point, the Apple AirPods Pro 2 for Apple devices is a no-brainer. No, they did not come with lossless audio as many people predicted, but did they really need to? With custom ear scanning, Apple's spatial audio gets a new lease of life. An audiophile friend of the channel, <laughs> you know who you are, pointed out that they listened to Miles Davis's Kind of Blue with spatial audio enabled. This is a very stereo recording and it was revealed to them in a completely new light with spatial audio turned on. For an audiophile to discover something new about a classic album, 
makes the AirPods Pro 2 something special. This is Apple flexing its tech skills and knowledge to move audio forward. And even when you're not talking spatial audio, the AirPods Pro 2 sounds fantastic and are an upgrade to the OG AirPods Pro in every single way when it comes to sound. That H2 chip is also doing a lot of smart stuff, so measurements aren't so simple as generating a frequency response graph anymore. Ah, Sony. We love Sony. They brought LDAC to wireless earbuds. I mean, LDAC is Sony's codec, so whoever else uses it, Sony wins. And in the battle between LDAC and Qualcomm Snapdragon sound, we're all winners. We still love the sound that the Sony WF-1000XM4 brings to the table. But the one area where we think it kind of lacks is the stock tuning, which is way too bass heavy. Also, if we were to look for flaws, the treble is on the quieter side, which cannot be fully fixed by EQ. That Sennheiser bass is bassy, and there's also pronounced bass boost in the normal mode as against the ANC mode, which is weird because in most cases you see the reverse. So the default tuning, much like the Sony, is not to my taste, and Sennheiser smart sound check feature almost seemed to know this because it spat out a high treble EQ preset, which I thought made it sound pretty good, where much more detail is revealed. So guys, it's really hard to rate these buds for sound since they all have their strengths and weaknesses. But still, we promised you a ranking, so you'll get a ranking. Here it is. Yes, we know it's kind of a cop-out, but hopefully this helps. Okay, let's talk phone calls. First, have a listen to the samples in noisy conditions, and we'll be waiting here with our conclusion. Okay, we have the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3 with slightly noisy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now we have the Bose Quiet Comfort Buds in kind of noisy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. And now the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro with cars passing by or trucks passing by. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now we have the Tony WF-1000XM4 with cars passing by. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now quieter. Now the Apple AirPods Pro with car passing by. The AirPods Pro generation 2, that is. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. The best in this particular situation was almost a toss-up between the Sennheiser and the Samsung. The Sennheiser was interesting. It let in more of the ambient sounds like the birds chirping and cancelled a lot of the car sounds out. The voice was also relatively natural sounding and audible even when Rowan was speaking softly. The Samsung takes a slightly different approach, almost similar to what you would be hearing if you were walking alongside Rohan. It tries to keep everything natural, so you hear the background sounds, but you also hear the voice clearly, even when he was speaking softly. Things start to get less good now. The AirPods do a good job at cutting out the cars in the background, whilst keeping the voice audible. The drawback is that the voice does sound slightly muffled at certain times, so not the most natural sounding. Then we've got Bose, who might be king at noise cancelling, but not for its microphones. You hear a lot of the background noise, especially the cars. You can still understand Rowan when he speaks loudly, but it starts to get very difficult when he speaks softly. At the bottom of the barrel, as expected from previous experiences, is the Sony. You just hear a lot of disturbance, even a whooshing sound coming from the cars, which isn't pleasant to listen to. The voice is distorted even when Rowan was speaking loudly and very difficult to understand when speaking softly. Now, go ahead and listen to the same samples, but now in windy conditions. See you on the other side. And now we have the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3 in slightly breezy windy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Okay, that was less windy than the rest. Now we have the Bose Quiet Comfort 2 in slightly breezy or windy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. 
of, of optical optical test, test, testing. One, two, three. And now the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro in windy conditions. Of, of optical ice 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 test test testing. That felt a bit windier than the others. Now we have the Sony WF 1000 XM4. Slightly breezy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. AirPods Pro 2 in slightly breezy conditions. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice. Let's just be clear that none of these buds are fantastic since wind noise is a tough cookie to crack. Or however that saying goes. But from what we see, the AirPods Pro 2 is on top. It's able to cut out a lot of wind. However, now and then you hear some interference. Rowan's voice is audible for the most part and gets a little tricky when he speaks softly. Then the Bose earbuds takes another approach. You hear almost no wind and the voice is audible throughout, but it does have a weird reverby effect to it, probably a result of harsh wind noise cancelling. The Sennheiser starts to struggle even with little wind. You could hear quite a bit of wind being piped in. Luckily, Rowan's voice rarely cut out and you could still make out what he was trying to say, but it got more difficult when he was speaking softly. On the Sony, you hear a lot of the wind, but when Rowan speaks loudly, he's still understandable. Not bad. But when he starts speaking softly, the wind noise is overpowering and becomes hard to follow. And finally, Samsung had it the worst with a lot of wind in the sample and it clearly shows. Samsung couldn't handle it. You could barely hear Rowan's voice and it was totally gone when he was speaking softly. Also, we feel sorry for the other person on the other end of the phone call having to hear so much of the wind being let through. So here's our ranking from best to worst. But our verdict on calling is never complete without talking about the controls de la FACMA. All earbuds these days support answer and hang up controls, but we get all warm and fuzzy inside when earbuds support volume controls, muting, and the ability to change ANC modes, all from the earbuds and while on a call. Most of the buds here have volume controls, except for the Sony, which is kind of odd since it does support it for audio. Unfortunately, none of the buds can mute the microphone, so that's a shame. And almost all buds allow you to change ANC modes, except for the Sennheiser. Now, there are also a few special call features like transferring the call to the phone when you take the earbuds out of your ears. That's supported by all except for Bose. The Bose does get a special shout out for their self voice feature, which can adjust how much of your own voice you'd like to hear while on a call. And a special mention for the Sennheiser, which can automatically accept the call when you place the buds in your ears. All in all, most support a solid feature set as long as you're not desperate for that mute control. So there's performance and there's experience. All these buds give you a very different experience and that's as important or more important than the performance itself. First off, for you Apple iPhone or other Apple product users, there's going to be a case to be made for the Apple AirPods Pro 2. You know, with the automatic pairing, the spatial audio ear scanning, the AirPods finding and the buds customizing, it's not a no brainer. Don't get us wrong because you're still paying a lot of money, but Apple makes it really easy for you to buy and use the AirPods Pro 2. And the fact that it performs so well, well, you know, that gravitational pull of the ecosystem, you know how that works. Out of all the buds here, the ones we recommend least for the Apple ecosystem is the Samsung Buds 2 Pro because the Galaxy wearable app on iOS doesn't support the Buds 2 Pro. Now look, Samsung's pulling an Apple and provides some nice deep integration on a Samsung phone and gives the app on other Android phones. But that is not a reason to not buy the Buds 2 Pro if you have an iPhone, for example, because you still get great sound, you still get reasonable ANC and transparency. Of course, Samsung also has automatic switching between Android devices, but you need to log into your Samsung account in the Galaxy wearable app for that to work. But the apps of the Sony, Bose and Sennheiser all work just fine with Apple devices too. And the Sennheiser has an advantage here. It's the only one of these buds that supports multipoint, which means you can use not only Apple, but another device, be it Windows or Android or Mac or your washing machine. Apple and Samsung also let you easily pull connection from a previously connected device without disconnecting from the current device, a brutally underrated feature, especially if you start using more than two devices. Sony also does this, but 
has another neat trick, Google's FastPair is on board, so you can connect to all your Android devices. Bose and Sennheiser have a nice device list in the Android and iOS apps to make switching that much easier. One disadvantage that Bose has here is that you can only use the right earbud on its own since it's the primary earbud. The left earbud cannot be used without the right one. It's a small detail, <laughs> but it's disappointing that this exists at this price in 2022. More on price at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Everyone's ears are different, but by far the most complaints from you guys are of two kinds. One about the fit on the Sony and two about the comfort on the Samsung Galaxy series of buds. With Sony, the hybrid foam tips don't fit everyone's ears. Either that or most people don't know how to squeeze the tips and twist the buds because these are not silicone tips, so they need to be treated a bit differently. When it comes to our personal experience, we feel the Sony's fit is good, but just isn't comfortable for longer durations. However, with the Galaxy Buds series, at least till before the Buds 2 Pro, we've heard complaints about allergic reactions for some folks. Like we said, this has not happened to us, but might be good to mention. Other than that, the least secure fit for us was the Sennheiser Momentum 3. Both Sennheiser and Bose tout stability bands, but give us the simplicity of a well-designed earbud with solid tips any day. The AirPods Pro 2 and the Bose are the most comfortable for us, and the Bose is also the most secure. All right, so what is the experience of using these buds in daily life? All of them have sensors to play and pause music once you take them out of your ears, but the controls, that's another story. The AirPods Pro 2, Sennheiser and Bose have the best controls in our opinion. All give you volume control right out of the box. The Sony makes you choose between volume or others. And the Samsung has one smooth surface for adjustment as well as control, which either works or doesn't. One thing we need to mention about the Bose is that touching the surface is very uncomfortable. It's hard to explain, but it felt like there was a pressure or a loud sound which we couldn't hear every time we touch the surface. We might be going crazy or it's the crazy Bose noise cancelling mics at work. In any case, if you've been experiencing this, know that you're not alone. Let's talk pocketability. All these buds are fairly pocketable. Probably the only one that's bordering on bulginess is the Sennheiser's case. The only case that's water resistant here is that of the AirPods. And that makes sense. If you're stuck in a light shower, the rain isn't going to avoid the case and hit just the buds. And speaking of the buds, all the buds here are IPX4, except for the Samsung, which is IPX7, which means it can resist a fair bit of liquid. Just don't submerge it in stuff. None of these buds are rated for that. All of these are flagship products, so you can expect top-notch build quality in terms of materials. All are hard plastic, but the Sennheiser takes a step up with that textile finish. If we had to nitpick though, we'd say the Sony's case has always been a bit creaky, even when it was new. And age makes us all a bit creakier. In terms of charging holes, you get what you would expect. Type-C on all the buds except for the Bose. Nah, just kidding. Except for the AirPods, which has a bad old lightning port. Don't make the EU slap you in the face, Apple. And then I'm gonna slap you in your face. All of these can do wireless charging, except the most expensive one, the Bose QuietComfort Buds 2. <sighs> I guess you really pay the price. If you look purely at the numbers on paper, the best battery life is to be had from the Sony at eight hours to the worst from the Samsung at five hours. And in terms of the case contest, that goes to the Apple with about 24 hours on the case. These are the numbers that you will get with ANC on. And these are the numbers with fast charging. But it's important to mention that these numbers are not what you'll always get in real life. For example, if you turn on LDAC on the Sony, you get considerably less battery life than the eight hours that's advertised. And all the parameters like ANC, transparency, volume are going to affect how good the battery performs in real life. But at the end of the day, having a case with extra charges and the ability to use just one bud on its own will help you maximize that battery life and stretch it to its limit. At current prices, the Samsung is a steal. Samsung and Sony also regularly discount their products. Samsung at this point even throws the buds in for free with new phones, which means you'll have a lot of people selling unopened boxes on Markplatz or whatever secondhand marketplace variant your country has. Whereas Apple, Bose and Sennheiser, they don't get discounted that often. Still, Sony and Samsung give you excellent value for money when they're on sale. As the most expensive, the Bose is something we can recommend for one reason only, their noise cancelling. It's eerily good, just another level. But that might not be enough to justify their price premium. 
On balance, the Sennheiser is our pick if you're moving across devices and are okay with slightly lower performance. But the Apple AirPods Pro 2 have really changed the game with their price, comfort, ANC, smarts, and sound. In fact, you could even consider the Apple AirPods Pro 2 if you're not on Apple, because they still have excellent ANC and transparency. But of course, you're gonna miss out on all that ecosystem lock-in. I mean, goodness. And while we're talking premium, there are a few other buds that come to mind that just missed the cut. The Jabra Elite 7 Pro, the Bioplay X, the Oppo Enco X2, the Pixel Buds Pro, and the Techniques AZ60. All of these do multipoint, all of these sound great, and the techniques out of these might just be the best for phone calls. Great buds, but we had to draw the line somewhere. Check out the many videos we've done on these buds on our channel, and we will have a full roundup for 2022, so stay subscribed. You've been binging DHRME, and we've been DHRME. Namaste.